Yeah, didn't do any work. Didn't do any virtual work. There's no virtual work done by the force of constraint. Is that kind of answer your question? Uh, so, is that right? No, not the force unpacking. The force that is keeping the object constrained to the lift door in that instance. Or to this to this wire or to this surface. Right? So it's the force that's keeping the object in some motion we already know about. It's the force of constraint as opposed to the force that we're we're applying to the And that force doesn't do any virtual work when we displace it inside this this um this constraint surface. Right, so our basic assumption is that the forces of constraint do not get virtual work. Now we go from Bernoulli to our friend friend down there and we ask if the forces of constraint do no virtual work, how can we use this? I'm going to erase this picture. I'm going to write our assumption on top. Uh, it's really not there where we want only one board. Um, so our assumption let's write it in that right? let's assume remember that I wrote the Newton's equation out as n and I'm going to put a little subscripts here now what I'm saying is that if I've got a system of particles this is the total force acting on the i part of the system right? the total force acting on the i part of the system is the mass times the acceleration of the i part but we already discussed this total force this force has to include the normal force, it has to include uh, the tension, it has to include the forces of constraint. And that's annoying. So, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to split this force up. We'll think of it as made up of two separate forces. <coughs> those forces that come from constraints, and those forces that don't. So, let's write this out as Fi constraints or oh, let, let me yeah I'm not sure that it's can everybody see so I can write the force on the ice particle as those from some external sources plus those due to constraints and I can let this be the mass times the acceleration of the i body because the mass is also the i body right? on the system so if I have some system of particles I can split the force up into an external things things like me pushing it down the slope things like, well maybe even friction uh, and, um, and other things things that are external, things, things that are external, and then also the constraint forces, the normal force, tension, sometimes friction when you've got a rolling object, right? Certain things that are not doing any virtual work. Right. So our assumption that the forces of constraint do no net virtual work can be written like this. The force of constraint on the i particle is that. How do we get the virtual work then done by that force? We dot it with a dirt, virtual displacement. <coughs> force of constraint, dot product with virtual, virtual displacement. That's a little infinitesimal virtual work. <coughs> We assume that when we add these up over all the particles in the system, the answer is zero. This is essentially saying that what we said in words. The forces of constraint do no net virtual work on the system. Right, so we've kind of convinced ourselves of this fact. Now we've got to think about what it does to Newton's laws. And at this point, I'm going to erase these pictures, but you should keep them in your mind. Uh, the fact that there's the motivation for really what we're doing, that when we pause the system and move things around, causes the constraint of doing no net virtual work on the particles in the system. Um, right, so let's write.
we're going to transform this equation into generalized coordinates. When we do that, it becomes bank. Thanks. We'll have a new equation. Right, bye.